Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to add a scroll that follows the music along with your sound file. I use this to help guide beginning music students, but it also has more advanced applications too. So let's get right down to it. First, let's take a look at the media pool. I have already loaded in a WAV file and the corresponding music. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the music photo, which is usually a JPEG, to the track line. After that, I'm going to add the WAV file underneath the music. How long I need to stretch out the music so it matches the WAV file. Looking at my music, I see I have a repeat sign. I need to find the point where I'm going to cut the music so I will know where to return the scroll to the beginning of that phrase. Okay, so let's listen a little bit. Stop, right there, okay. That's where I wanna put the cut. Back it up to the slight, right there, and I'm gonna to go to the scissors and put a little cut into the music. That's where the, the repeat sign is gonna be. Okay, next I'm going to the left-hand side where it says media pool. And I'm going to look under the effects tab. And I'm gonna click that. And I'm going to go to the generators tab. Next, I'm looking for the one that says solid color, and I'm gonna drag that down over the music. Put that right near the beginning of the, of the song, and I'm gonna stretch it out over the whole length. All right, stop. Now, all we see on our timeline is a black screen. Oh my gosh, have no fear. We're going to go to the inspector. In the inspector, you can see that you could change the color of our scroll. Today, we're just gonna work with the black color and I'm gonna show you how we can use the opaque slider to lighten it so it will change into a delicate charcoal color. Now we're gonna go under the settings button and there you will see there's an opaque Packety button slider right over here. And I'm going to slide it to, let's say, about 33%, something around there. Also, I'm going to crop the left side to about hmm, around 923. And the right hand side, I'm also going to move it over to about 967. So now you can see I have a nice looking scrolling device. What I'm gonna do is also, I am going to crop the top part down. So it, a little bit too much. And I'm gonna crop the bottom part. So it is fits inside the staff area. Before I go any further, I'm going to click on the music track and I'm gonna to go to this little toolbar here and I'm gonna resize my music because once you got the music of the right size, you cannot change it if you want the scroll to work with the music. So now that I made my music a little bit bigger, I want to click the scrolling bar and I'm going to make the top just a little bit bigger and the bottom a little bit longer. And I like the thickness to be about the size of a note head. So I'm going to put it right over the note and maybe I'm gonna make it just a little tiny bit bigger. Some people like a thin line, some people like it a little bit thicker. I like the scroll to be about the same size as the musical note head. Well, it's starting to really shape up and looking like a scroll should look like it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ruler marker and I'm gonna move it to the same spot where I sliced the music and made a cut into the scroll track. Right there, 
and I'm going to click the scroll track. And I'm going to put the scissors and make a snippet there. That way, it will repeat back to the beginning. That way, when I reach the repeat sign, the scroll will be at the beginning of the music. Now, I'm going to move the scroll to the beginning of the musical phrase right before the first note by moving my arrow over the position marker selection. Now, under the inspector to the right of the position marker, I'm going to click the diamond shaped figure and turn it off. Now it is shadowed. Now that I've moved the scroll to the beginning of the musical phrase right before the first note, I'm going to make sure position diamond, it, it is on selected off. And now I'm going to take the ruler marker and move it to the end of the phrase. And I'm going to stop right before that split, right over there. And now I'm going to move the position over to the right hand side to the very end of the musical phrase. So now when I return the ruler marker back to the beginning, you can see the scroll will go backwards. Go back up to that. All right there. Okay. Now let's return to the beginning of the musical phrase and see if we have to make any adjustments. Well, let's start the music and make sure that our scroll hits the first note at the right time. All right. Okay, so I can see in my wave track that this is the very first note. And if I look at the music, it's a little bit past the first note. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna go to the, ins to the position inspector. I'm gonna push back the note right back on that first note. So it will start right on time. Let's try that now. Better. So then you have to keep looking at your wave track and making sure that the notes are lining up properly. You can make the fine adjustments in your position marker, either push it forward or backwards to make sure that the scroll is meeting the note. It looks pretty good. Now at the repeat sign, we just have to repeat the same process over again. I hope that this tutorial is helpful. Please look up my YouTube and subscribe. I'm easy to find. Just look for Trombone Race Car. Leave a comment for any other Da Vinci tutorials that you would like for musicians. Thank you. See you next time.